Hello everybody. Welcome back to My Tips from the Cottage. I'm Charles Matthew and I'd like to first off say hello to some new friends uh, at Clear Mind Sounds. You guys have an excellent product and I wish you every success in the world. And come on up here. And this is my sidekick Annie. Awesome Annie. And uh, anytime she hears me talking, she thinks something's going on. So, uh, a little different than the other episodes. Um, instead of talking and then doing, we're just going to jump right into the doing and we'll talk at the same time. Um, I think it's just a marvelous miracle of technology that, uh, that we can all be on one side of the world and reach out and say hello to brothers and sisters on the other side of the world. I think it's awesome uh, down in Australia, uh, Russia, China, Europe, anybody that's out there, uh, welcome to the cottage. And the one thing that uh, I heard some interesting advice uh, when uh, John Chancellor, you probably remember him, a famous, uh, uh, well, he was in uh, an anchor for news for, for many, many years. And, and when he retired, I'll never will forget uh, on his uh, sign off, he said that when he had first got into journalism, that, uh, that the, the, the gentleman who more or less broke him into the business told him, never ever forget that you're a guest in their home. And I always want to behave as if I'm a guest in your home and you're a welcome guest in my home. So what I wanted to jump into now is uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're in uh, spring, well into spring. And uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, you're in the fall, like uh, duh, you didn't know, you've already know that. But um, what I wanted to cover was um, uh, some bicycle maintenance. And um, the, uh, I try to do it twice a year, uh, a thorough, especially in the spring, a thorough tune-up. And we're not going to get into anything in real depth. We'll, we'll do that later on, uh, bicycle mechanics. Um, we're just going to cover the, the simple things. Your bike's probably been, uh, if you haven't been riding in the winter or the spring, or I'm summer, uh, summer, I'm sorry, um, then uh, if you haven't been riding, it's sat for a while, and we'll just go over some real basic stuff. But... Um, Believe it or not, in, in my philosophy, the, uh, what, where bicycle maintenance begins is right here. Right here. Begins with bicycle safety. The reason is, if you're recovering from a bad bump on the head from a spill, uh, you're not going to be able to do maintenance. Plus, in the reverse, if you don't do your maintenance, you may end up taking a spill, and you always, always, always. I didn't, when I was younger, I didn't used to believe this, but uh, always wear a helmet, especially the kiddos. Um, you, can, you can buy helmets for fairly inexpensively. You know, they can start at $10 and go on up to $500 if you want a nice carbon fiber, uh, carbon bridge helmet. But, uh, but a medium priced helmet. I guarantee you it will save you a whole lot more than stay in the hospital. Um, so I'm going to stop the tape and get set up on, a, on I'll show you some things on the bicycle. Um, and, and as always, uh, send me your feedback, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. Okay, we're here in the lobby because this is going to be the simplest way for me to show you this. Um, now you don't need this. You don't have to have this. I did bicycle maintenance for, well, just a long time. That's, I'll leave it at that um, without one of these. But this, uh, okay, this bike stand here, uh, for, for reasons of simplification, it's just easier to show you on one of these. Uh, you can buy those anywhere from, uh, oh, I think you can get them starting. If you can catch them on sale for $70 or $80, and then it's like anything in bicycling, is uh, like any other sport or any other hobby. Uh, you can spend as much as you want, uh, but you can get some very basic things, some very basic tools and devices, and not really spend a lot of money, especially if you go garage sailing or um, catch stuff on sale. A lot of the, the um, bicycle uh, catalogs um, the, uh, through the mail, uh, they run sales. Watch for clearance stuff. Anyway, okay, here we go. Um, one of the very first thing, this is, this is our bicycle stand here, and I'll show you on a couple different bikes, but um, 
where you want to begin, I would say, is uh, with your checklist is a very basic thing is tires, the condition of your tires. Um, around here where I live, we have an excellent uh, variety of, of cycling and there's not a lot of people out here that do this. Um, we have all terrain, um, we have hills, we have straightways and when I say straightways I mean it's like 300 kilometer street you can go if you want. Um, right close to here I have several treks that I go uh, that make a perfect 100k, um, 100 kilometer, uh, 63, 62, 63 miles, something like that. And in the height of my cycling in the summer, that's what I'll be doing um, probably every other Saturday. But anyway, uh, okay, start with the tires. Uh, check your tread. Um, you want to make sure that you're, uh, and I, if you're an avid cyclist, um, you know you can wear these knobbies down to the very tread, the bare tread, and even have some strands showing. Um, but check the condition of that. And the simplest thing, and probably one of the most neglected, is tire pressure. Um, now that's a 29er, what they call a 29er, 29-inch um, uh, uh, mountain bike. And what uh, you will always find, if there's any question in your mind, you will always find, let's see if I can find it here, you will always find a tire pressure, and it's maybe, may, you may not can see it in this light, but right in here, it tells our tire pressure 40 to 65 PSI. And then it gives, of course, a metric equivalent, 280. Uh, to 460 kilopascals, I think it is. Anyway, uh, make sure your tire pressure is right. Um, not only does it make the ride more comfortable, your tires will last longer. It's much safer. Now, I'll just quickly say, um, you know, we were talking about safety. Um, the Department of Transportation in the United States, um, very edict on bicycles, and believe it or not, most people don't know this, you have got to have reflectors on the pedals, a front and rear reflector on the wheel, uh, like that, and uh, then you have to have a white reflector in the front and a red reflector in the back. A minimum. Now, this is the minimum that they that they uh, dictate. And of course, I have a, a light too. Um, never ride uh, at night without lights. That's also against the law here in Texas. Um, in the state of Texas, believe it or not, there is an inspection, uh, not, not a formal inspection code that you, you know, you take it down and you get somebody to inspect your bike, but, but the, the believe it or not, it's actually written on the books that as far as the brakes on your bicycle, whatever type you have, you have to be able to skid on dry pavement before the state considers them to be in, in good condition. And uh, that's just a good rule of thumb anyway. Okay, but, but make sure your tire pressure is up on your pre-inspection. Make sure whether you've got skewers or bolts like this, um, that they're tight, there's no play. Uh, make sure, especially on your steering wheel, that you don't have any slop in the stem. And, um, and of course your brakes, you've got to, now this, this particular type has a sort of a hybrid, it has disc on the front and uh, V brakes on the back. But just make sure that those, you know, whenever Whenever you're you're actually going, that they'll stop is just really good. Um, now, uh, and of course, this is a, this is a shot of the V brakes on the back. Or, uh, can I think they call them center or uh, cantilever? Anyway, um, uh, chain. Uh, you want to make sure chains are very badly neglected, especially if they sat outside. And the really and truly the correct way of, of lubing that chain, and they, it, with, later on we'll get into oils, different types, of, whether a dry oil or a wet oil. Um, but, but the proper way to do that, let's see if I can get up close. Proper way to do that is to actually put a drop of oil, and even 20 weight machine, uh, sewing machine oil is a good oil for this. Put one drop on each link all the way all the way down the line. One drop and then just run it, just you know, run it around. And then there's pivot points that you'd want to make sure that they're free. Um, believe it or not, from what I've read from the experts, uh, you don't want to really use WD-40. You want to use an actual oil. Uh, WD-40 is more of a solvent. Um, although I admit I've used it many times in myself. But anyway, 
Uh, make sure your pedals are free um, and working well. And uh, when you go out uh, on a ride, depending on the length of your ride, uh, I would say always take one of the most basic things. That's another thing I didn't really used to believe. Uh, always take a cell phone just in case. And uh, uh, my standard hardware is pepper spray. That's the that can be good for the two-legged dogs as well as the four-legged ones. Um, and uh, okay, now if you're going to go very far, here's something I strongly recommend. Now here's my road bike, and uh, you see this uh, saddle pack right here. Um, I've actually got quite a bit more than you would think. You could actually put in there. You really pack it with tools and a tube, a spare tube, because it's so much easier just to change a tube. I know it's extra weight, but change the tube if you get it flat. And I found that out the hard way in the winter time. Change the tube and all, and then uh, don't worry about patching it. Patch that tube when you get back, and we'll cover that in a subsequent episode, too. Also, now here's another. This will kind of my pride and joy, but uh, it's Cannondale. And I'm not really plugging Cannondale. It's just it's a great bike. It's been one of the best bikes I've ever had. But anyway, a Parrot Pack. It's another type of pack, and, and you can see right here, I've got mounted. Uh, it's a tire pump and um, so I can take along my air and a lot of people take uh, the CO2 which is fine but hey when you're out you're out but this as long as you got a an arm stroke you can put air in your tires as much as you need to and uh, um, if you're going very far also um, you might want to take along something to eat and which uh, I'm gonna stop the tape and I'll show you what my ideas on that is okay on uh, bike trips you the name of the game is keeping it light Always take plenty of water, whether it's a hydro pack or whether it's um, bottled water on your uh, bottle cage. Um, this here, uh, dehydrated apples, dried apples, nice and lightweight and uh, give you energy. Uh, this packet of peanut butter, which I got for 39 cents, and it's just right for, for 100K. You'll stop, you know, stop halfway and have that with, uh, with some honey, a little pack. You can get packages of honey. Um, now this here is a cheaper way to do it. Just uh, you can buy a big, a big uh, can of uh, peanuts, and then fill them with a snack bag, or, or, or fill a snack bag with the peanuts. It's you know half the size of a sandwich bag. And you know I'm not going to let you get out of here without recycling something. Okay. Now this happens to be a well, it's empty of course, but it was a, a container of honey, raw honey I got at the health food store. Of course I saved stuff like this. And this is perfect for to take uh, one of these and uh, put some honey. It's always cheaper to buy in bulk. Or you can mix, just fill it halfway with, uh, well, two thirds of the way with peanut butter and then one uh, third with honey. You got a great energy boost uh, plus the complex carbohydrates that'll get you back home. So I'm going to put the camera back and uh, just give me a minute. Okay, I know that was a crash course on the bicycle maintenance, but pay attention to a few little things in your bicycle last year, a lifetime. Um, also, um, I wanted to be sure and, and mention, uh, while you're still on YouTube, uh, type in Aaron Shoes, We Are Free. That's an awesome song, very inspirational. And uh, I hope I've giving you a tip or two on something and uh, haven't taken up too much of your time. You're always welcome back here and I hope I'm welcome in your home. And as always, God bless you. And if you're feeling down, hey, hang in there. Uh, things will turn around for you one way or another. Talk to the man upstairs. He, uh, he is, his door is always open. So God bless and clear mind sound. You're awesome. Uh, wish you the very best. Y'all take care. We'll see you at the next Bend in the Road.